Hello and welcome back to Specialist Lending Solutions. I'm Victoria Hartley, Group Editor of SLS. Hello again, Marie, and thanks for being here today to get into the detail on some of the cases you're seeing at West One Loans. Now, buy to let and second charge. As one of the few second charge lenders offering landlords products, what drives demand in this market and why are there so many landlords looking at this right now? Yeah, well, I think um, the buy to let market has actually performed really well throughout the pandemic. Um, we see quite a lot of um, landlords come to us that may well have taken out a longer term fixed rate mortgage product. Um, we know um, from the changes to the PRA rules about five years ago that that it drove more landlords down the route of longer term mortgage products. Um, so during um, the fixed rate term, um, there's a few opportunities, I think, for further advances for landlords. So having access to second charge finance actually gives them really great options. Um, typically, the loan purposes that we see are there to um, maybe refurbish existing uh, buy to let properties so they can look to increase rental yield or value of the properties. Um, we also see quite a lot of landlords use second charges to extend their property portfolio and use them either as deposits or outright uh, purchases for, for further buy to let investments. Um, but they also have the option of using them for personal use as well. So there are quite a lot of varied opportunities for landlords um, and also they're available for consumer buy to let borrowers too, um, which again, and just gives access to a broader range of borrowers that wouldn't necessarily have access to um, that type of finance. Um, so it is something that we see growing all the time. Um, we can offer multiple applications as well. So up to three applications per landlord. So if they've got a number of buy to let properties, there's options to extract equity from a number of properties rather than just rely on one. Um, and also alternatives for um, expat borrowers and landlords who own HMO properties. So there really is quite a, a broad range of, of options for landlords looking to access second charges with, with West One and the other lenders obviously operating in this sector. Lovely. Thanks, Marie. Bank of mum and dad, uh, it's an old topic, isn't it? As the 95% lending market returns, and wow, it has it returned as well um, since the government scheme actually launched with five lenders in, in mid-April. Has deposit gifting become another ready source of business for the second market at West One? And specifically, how are you supporting those borrowers? Yes, yeah, so this is um, an innovative um, set of criteria that we introduced towards the end of um, 2020 because, you know, I just saw this as an opportunity for the first and second charge markets to work much more closely together because obviously at that time, those higher LTV products weren't necessarily available um, and we know from some of the research that's been done i know lng did a, a big piece of research on this um towards the end of last year and around one in four property purchases in 2020 were supported by uh, family assisted purchases i think now um the average deposit is something like fifty-seven thousand pounds for a first-time buyer which is obviously a phenomenal sum of money and um, so i think options for parents and grandparents to really help get their sort of relatives the younger relatives onto the property ladder is becoming more and more important and actually there's opportunities there for second charges to provide access to that finance so it may be um for borrowers who have savings but don't necessarily want to use all of those to to donate to family members um, or to give them a larger deposit so they could access lower LTV lending in the first charge market is another example of that. So that's why we brought out some specific criteria to support that type of borrowing. And again, you know, it, it's becoming more and more popular all the time. And I think hopefully other lenders will follow suit and um, and second charges will be recognised as a, as a really um, ideal way of accessing that type of borrowing. I know overall, the total number of product transfers carried out in 2020 fell by just 3%, um, down to 1,171,500,000. Now, this represented 168.3 billion of mortgage borrowing being refinanced internally. Remo also fell by 21%. So how do you expect the product transfer market to play out this year for seconds? Yes, so I think the relevance of the product transfer market to second charges is really the opportunity for mortgage intermediaries to actually 
use second charges as a way of keeping in touch with their client bank. I mean, what we do know about the product transfer market that it's generally a race to get who, to, as to who gets to the customer first. So we know there are a large number of those product transfers that happen without any involvement from the introducing intermediary because those transactions may have been done directly with the first charge lender. Um, clearly at that, at that point, the product transfer takes place where normally an advisor would be having conversations about whether they have any other borrowing needs are not taking place. So it's an opportunity really for more mortgage intermediaries to include second charges within their scope of advice. And um, so that when they are trying to retain their client bank and keep in touch with them, second charges again it is another conversation um, to be had with their clients and, and obviously make sure that they're offering a, a wide range of financial solutions. Um, because just relying on a mono product, I think in this environment is not going to work um, too well. We've all got to adapt, our, obviously, our business models as, as things change. I mean, we're also seeing changes in terms of the popularity of longer term fixed rates again in the first charge market. So, yeah, I think it, it's just really about creating awareness of how um, the growth of the product transfer market really feeds into the need for intermediaries to, to really widen their advice scope. And I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today. It's been such a pleasure, Marie. And a huge thanks to everybody also watching Specialist Lending Solutions Television. See you next time.